There are 888 named characters in Tolkien's Legendarium. 888. And yet, I have a theory that there is one who stands out from all the others. One character to rule them all. A la Tulia Meldonia, Ahara Mariese. My name is Rainbow Dave, and welcome to another Tolkien fun fact video. Okay, so I'll be honest. Today's fun fact is really more of an opinion than a fact, although it is founded on facts. But I'm not suggesting that this character is the best, or my favorite, or the most important, or anything like that. However, at least by one definition, I would argue that this character is the most genetically perfect in the entire Legendarium. No other character has this same claim to fame. Now, I've come up with a pretty out there theory, and I'll be interested to hear what you guys think of it. But I feel that, to an extent, this character is the point of all of Arda's history. So bear with me here, okay? This is going to get a little bit complicated. Now, my theory begins with Eru Iluvatar, aka the One God, the creator of everything, and the creator of the three races that were created to inhabit Arda. So first off, there are the Ainur, the angels, which Eru created as an offspring of his thought. Then there are the firstborn children of Iluvatar, known better as the Elves. And lastly, there are the afterborn children of Iluvatar, who we know as the race of men. Now, I can only apologize to the dwarves, but sorry, you don't really count. They're sort of like an adopted middle child between elves and men, and they really have more in common with like Ents and Eagles than with the children of Iluvatar. Anyway, in the Silmarillion, we learn that a significant part of this plan was to mix the blood of these three races to create the ultimate pedigree hybrid. Now, this began with Melian the Maya. She was an Ainu, an angelic being who is older than the universe itself. And she fell in love with an elven lord called Eluthingol. And together, the two of them had a child, Luthien the Fair. Now, Luthien is a badass and an undeniably awesome character. Some might even say perfect. But she's not who this video is about. You see, Luthien is a 50-50 hybrid of Ainur and Elf. So, when she falls in love with the mortal man Baron, and they have a son named Dior, that son is 25% Ainur, 25% Elf, and 50% Man. And when Dior has children with an elven princess called Nimloth, their daughter Elwing is 62.5% Elf, 25% Man, and 12.5% Ainur. Now, just to add an extra level of complexity into this theory, among the High Elves there are three clans, the Vanyar, the Noldor, and the Teleri. And within the Edain, that's the noblest group of men, and the ancestors of the Dun Edain, there are another three clans, the House of Beor, the House of Haleth, and the House of Marach. Now, when Beren met Luthien, he was the last surviving chieftain of the House of Beor. And Luthien's father was the High King of the Teleri. So, by the time we get to Elwing, we know that she contains a mix from the blood of the Ainur, the Teleri, and the House of Beor. So, Let's just put a pin in Elwing for a second. She's very important, but I'll come back to her in just a moment. Because while all that is going down, we still have the other two elven clans. And we have the other two houses of men. Now, in a very different part of the world, the High King of the Noldor 
married a lady of the Vanya, and they had a son called Fingolfin, who is 50% Noldor and 50% Vanya. Now, Fingolfin's second son, who is called Turgon, also married a lady of the Vanya, which means Turgon's daughter Idril Celebrindal is 75% Vanya and 25% Noldor. So, Idril is very important too, because she is the second elf in the Legendarium to marry and procreate with a mortal man. Her husband is called Tuor, and Tuor's father was of the house of Marak, and his grandmother was of the house of Haleth. So, Tuor has within him blood from two of the three houses of men, and Idriel has within her blood from two of the three houses of the elves, which means their son is a perfect 50-50 half-elf who can trace his ancestry to the Vanya and the Noldor on his mother's side and to the houses of Haleth and Marach on his father's side. This son is called Earendil, and he is very important too. Because when Earendil is all grown up, guess who he ends up marrying? The answer is of course Elwing, remember her? So, this means that the twin sons of Earendil and Elwing are an incredible cocktail of elf, man, and Ainur, and the blood of all three kindreds of both men and elves runs through their veins. In fact, both of these twins are 15.625% Vanya. 9.375% Noldor, and 31.25% Teleri. But that's just their elven heritage, they are also, approximately, 23.4375% House of Beor, 6.25% from the House of Haleth, 7.8125% from the House of Marach, and the final 6.25% is Ainur. I warned you this was going to get complicated. So I guess by now you might be thinking, that makes these twins the two most perfect characters in Eru Iluvatar's plan, right? Well, not quite. My theory goes deeper. You see, the twin sons of Earendil and Elwing are both given a choice. To either live as men or to live as elves. Now, the elder twin chooses to live as an elf, and he becomes the very, very famous character who we all know as Elrond. And Elrond married an elf maiden called Celebrian, who happens to be the daughter of Galadriel and Celeborn. And I didn't go into this earlier, but it turns out that Galadriel's mother was 100% Teleri, and her father was the brother of Fingolfin, so he too was 50% Noldor and 50% Vanya. Now this means that Galadriel is also descended from all three High Elven clans, and her husband Celeborn is a prince of the Sindar, the mightiest clan of the Dark Elves. So what all these means is that Celebrian has a lot going on in her genetics. And so when she marries Elrond, she reinforces his mad cocktail of divine ancestry with her own astounding lineage. Which means that their daughter Arwen is about as well-bred as you can get, right? I mean, she is. But Arwen is still not my number one most well-bred character. Because, don't forget, Arwen's father Elrond had a twin brother, and his name was Elros. And unlike Elrond, Elros chose to live as a mortal man, and he became the first High King of Numenor. Now, over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, the descendants of Elros ruled Numenor, with some making much better kings than others. But in the end, it all 
fell apart, and only a very small number of Numenorians survived the ruins of their homeland and escaped to Middle-earth. And they were led by King Elendil, who is a direct descendant of Elros. Now, we all know that Elendil's son is Isildur, and Isildur became the High King of Gondor and Arenor after his father's death. Fast forward about three more thousand years, and the last surviving heir of Isildur is the chieftain of the Dúnedain, Aragorn. And this is where everything comes together, because who does Aragorn end up marrying? The daughter of Elrond, the niece of Elros, the granddaughter of Eärendil, the great-granddaughter of Tuor, and Idril, and Dior, and Nimloth, the great-great-granddaughter of Beren, and Luthien, and Fingolfin, and the great-great-great-granddaughter of Eluthingol, and Melian the Mire. So, when Aragorn marries Arwen, he becomes the third mortal man to marry into the Eldar in this family tree. And once again, these disparate branches from every conceivable clan of the children of Iluvatar are united into their son. And his name is Eldarion. So, what I've been building to this whole time is simply this. Eldarion, the son of Aragorn and Arwen, is the most well-bred character in the entire Legendarium. He is the result of an ancient genetic cocktail that began all the way back with the angel Melian marrying the High King Eluthingol. And every single branch in the Tree of Life, converging not once, not twice, but three times to bring him into the world. Now, Eldarion doesn't exactly do much in the books. That's mostly because the Lord of the Rings ends before he's even born. But he does represent the last vestige of the Elder Days. Yet, he also represents the first High King of the Fourth Age, and the new world that follows after the departure of the Elves. Eldarion is that link between the ancient past and the unknown future. He is the last High King of one epoch, and the first High King of another. So. There you go, guys. In my humble opinion, Eldarion, the son of Aragorn and Arwen, is the most genetically perfect character in Tolkien's Legendarium. And I am aware that Tolkien never talks about genetics specifically, and inherited nobility seems to be a lot more mystical than simple DNA. But Eldarion does seem to be the point of Eru Iluvatar's plan even if he does barely feature in the story. He is what the world was building to when Eru first created life. Now, just before I finish, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Aragorn and Arwen do also have at least two daughters, and the lineage of these daughters is just as perfect as Eldarion's. But, sadly, Tolkien never told us their names. So, I'm afraid there's really nothing else to say about them. Anyway, thank you all for watching this video, and don't take this theory too seriously, alright? I'm not saying that Eldarion is the most important character, and I'm certainly not saying that Tolkien wrote the Legendarium with Eldarion in the forefront of his mind, like we know he didn't. But I hope you found my theory interesting, let me know what you think in the comments, and as always, dear friends, until next time, much love. Stay groovy, and Nevaya Melanine.